Hi, I'm Joe Jermuska, the director of Night Lab, and today I'm going to introduce you to a few of our storytelling tools in hopes that you might use them for work at Medill. This is the Night Lab website. If you need a quick list of our tools, you can click on the projects link here and it will show you them. And the tools I'm going to show today are in the storytelling section. Some of the things on this page are a little out of date, uh, but these are all current and hopefully useful to you. I'll start with the most popular one of our tools. It's called Timeline. As you'll see, the domain name for the Timeline site directly is timeline.nightlab.com. That's pretty much the pattern. and You'll find it pretty easy to find our things for yourself on the web. If you've never seen a Timeline before, let me take a moment to show you our example on the home page. A Timeline just organizes a story in the context of a sequence of events. Each event has essentially a slide, which has some text, including a headline and a media element. And then at the bottom of the timeline, there's a navigational unit, which represents each date of each event, arranged proportionally and scaled. If they have a duration, you can click on the markers in the navigation tool to go to a timeline slide. Or of course, as I was showing you before, you can use the next and previous buttons. As you can see, it's easy to embed all kinds of media on a timeline. Uh, images are most common, probably videos from YouTube and Vimeo. As you can see on this page, a uh, sound clip from SoundCloud. There are many, many options, and I'll show you the documentation in a moment. But first, let's take a look at just what it takes to make a timeline. It's really very easy. You'll see on all of our pages a big green button that takes you to the heart of the tool. So if we click the green button for timeline, it takes you to this part of the page. The instructions are simple, but I do recommend you read them, but I will kind of show you how things go anyway now. So first you would click on get the spreadsheet template. Making a timeline is based on a Google Sheet. Uh, and so if you do this, if you hadn't been, it would prompt you to log into a Google account. And then you would come here, you make a copy, and it gives you uh, this spreadsheet. Make sure to never change anything in the top row when we have support questions. Often it's because people accidentally type over some of the headers. But these are, this is the content of a timeline. Let me show you the one that is behind the example on the home page. I think that might be a little easier to understand if you just sort of look at it. The link is up here right below the example. And if we open that up, you can see dates, um, headline, text, media, media credit and caption, thumbnail, type, and group, and background are the columns. And I also will show you the documentation that describes each of these columns in more detail. But most people don't really need to read a lot of documentation to make a timeline. You just make one row for each slide. You make sure to put in something for the date. There has to be at least a year. If you don't need to specify a month or day or you don't know it, you can leave those out. If the event has a duration, use the end year to specify the end time. But don't bother putting the same time in if it, there is no duration. Just leave it blank, as you can see from some of these rows. For the display date, look at the documentation. It doesn't come up that often, but you can read about it there. But every slide, you'll have a headline and some text. And this, just type what you want in here. Note on this page that the text takes HTML markup. Giving you a tour of HTML markup is out of scope for this video, but hopefully you've seen it already before. And there are many tutorials on the internet that would show you how to do the basics. Uh, P tags, anchor tags to make links, with simple formatting like bold and italics. Some tags are stripped out, just be warned. For security reasons, not all HTML tags are permitted, uh, but most of the simple ones for formatting and linking are straightforward. The media column is kind of the magic part of timeline. In many cases, uh, if you put a URL to a service that provides media, timeline will be able to figure out how to embed the content from that page on in the timeline slide that this row represents. I'll show you some more about the media details in a moment too. Going back to the example, though, it's a good, always good to think about making sure that you credit your media and often uh, a caption, even if the text next to the image or other content tells something about it, it's very good to add a caption that provides more specific contextual information for the piece of media. And those, again, are the media and media credit and caption columns. You can do a little markup, as you can see here, in the media credit column. If you want to change the way that the media marker is tagged in the navigation component, you can use the thumbnail, but I won't talk about that more. For the type column, note that this will almost always be blank. Uh, if you want to have a title slide like our example does that doesn't have a date and sort of serves as an introduction to your timeline, put the word title in the type cell. Group, again, I'll defer to the documentation for what that means. 
And for the background, you can see here, these are URLs to images. Uh, our example timeline makes it takes advantage of a sort of dramatic uh, style of having an image behind the text. If you have some good images and it's uh, not important that people see all the details, this might be a way to liven up your timeline. Again, uh, we'll look at the docs, but let's finish going through the making process before we get any further. So once you've gone through your timeline and put in whichever rows you want so as, you, as to have uh, all your data, your story told, look at step two. And this says that you want to use the publish to the web feature in Google Sheets. We have illustrations here, so I'm not even going to go and demonstrate it. Look at these. Uh, I think you'll find it pretty clear. One thing that can be confusing is after you do this second part of the sub-step of step two, where you do publish, you get a window that has a URL, and that is not the right URL to use. Google changed things after we create a timeline, and so it goes. Uh, but what you do want is the URL from the top of the address bar. For example, with this one, you just take this piece and copy it to your clipboard, and then we'll come over here and finish the process. So assuming that you've published your Google Sheet document, you paste that URL in here, and as soon as you've done that, actually, you'll see the preview below, and you can see to make sure that things are right, double check to see if it if it stylistically is what you want. You can make a few settings. The one that's probably most likely for you to want to use is the fonts. If you want to just change the typography, you can choose from this menu and get a different representation. And the preview should, again, automatically update. If it doesn't, we click the preview button and, uh, and you see it. it just gives you a different style so it doesn't look like every other timeline. There are a few other options here, but uh, I don't think we'll get into them because it's not most of them are not commonly used, but the fonts are a nice feature. Once you're done, as, uh, as this part explains, you can embed your timeline. If you just want to send it to someone to review, take this link from the first section, and as you'll see, if I just open a new tab, that opens the timeline that I've made. If you're getting ready to publish it on, for example, Medill Reports, you would want this embed code. And uh, I'll leave it to you to consult with the people who run Medill Reports for the details. There's some small nuances to getting a timeline published, um, but it's something they know all about. And ha students use them all the time, so they'll be able to help you with it. And so basically, that's it for how to make a timeline. I, as I mentioned, I was going to tell you about some documentation. So here, uh, if you go to the help, click on the help link at the top, you'll come straight to this section. You'll see we have pages about using the spreadsheet template, which is, it's a little wordy, but it goes into each column and provides some details. If you get stuck, there's a lot of information here. Um, I'm sorry, this is actually the page that just talks about the general idea. And then uh, there is another page which goes column by column in the documentation. Um, there's some other things you can learn about here too. Uh, including the list of media types, so I meant so I'd get back to this. This uh, gives some more information about the kinds of things you can put in the media column. I think looking at our examples will also give you a lot of idea, ideas. Um, sometimes uploading images is a small hitch, but uh, this is not the place to get into the details. If you can use Flickr uh, or post images, you'll be in good shape. Uh, or if you can upload the images to the media library of the server where you're publishing them to get a URL, things work out pretty well. But basically, that's timeline. One last thing, if we go back to the, um, the timeline homepage, is if you do get stuck, we have a, a support desk. Um, rather than contacting me or anyone on the team directly, we ask that people use our online help system. And so uh, you can use this for any of our tools. But if you read this documentation, you can see that, uh, that it provides a link to submit a request. And we generally get back to people all the same day, um, except weekends maybe and holidays. But uh, we're pretty responsive. It's just a few of us who watch it, so we do have other things to do. But there you have Timeline and Nutshell. So let's go back to uh, our projects guide. And I'll show you now Story Map, which is probably our second most popular tool. So if you go to Story Map, the Story Map is really modeled much after Timeline in that it provides a story in the context of the places where it happens. And so this example on the homepage shows how the uh, mathematical center of population for the United States has been moving westward uh, as each census has happened. And this is just an excuse to put some markers on a map. Um, but as you can see, as I step through this, the um, basics are much the same. There's a headline, there's text, there's some media, there's a marker. Like I said, most of our websites have a big green button. So if you click on that, um, I will say that this is a different model than Timeline. Instead of using a Google spreadsheet, we have a tool that allows you to make it in the web. 
which uh, saves you the trouble of documenting latitudes and longitudes to put markers down. That's the main reason we did this. You have to have a Google account. I've already logged in, so it didn't stop me. Otherwise, um, the Google account is just so that we don't have to manage another password and uh, be the ones responsible if people forget how to get access. So they just use Google and get to it. So we go ahead and we make a story map. And if you click on Create, you get this web interface that looks sort of like PowerPoint or Google Slides, because that slide metaphor is uh, really what we got going. So uh, as we said, much like timeline, every slide should has, have a headline. This is a title, and you can have some text here. Um, oops, um, you can do a little bit of formatting here. Uh, you can't type HTML into this directly, but if you click on this little marker, it shows you the HTML version. Uh, much with like with timeline, some markup is stripped, um, so it's probably better to use these if you want to make a link from your page. Uh, that's this one. It's a little uh, it has, hasn't been updated in a while, as you can see, but it's that's pretty good. Um, the same kinds of URLs that work for timeline generally work here. If you have something on the internet that you want to include, like a Flickr image or a SoundCloud audio, if you have your own images for story map, you can actually upload them yourself by clicking on this. Uh, and I'm not going to go through that whole process, but you click here to upload it, and then it will show you. And then actually, you can use that image elsewhere in your story. As with uh, timeline, story map has a few options per story map that you can set. So if you go up here to the left corner and click on options, it opens this modal box. Again, the main one you'll probably want to use is the typography. Uh, for technical reasons that aren't worth getting into here, you can't see the typeface examples in this menu. But if you want to see what they look like together, uh, you can click on this little question mark next to the fonts and we'll show you. And you can use that to guide your choice. Um, uh, this call to action on the very first slide of every um, story map below the headline and text that we have. Uh, if you want a button, you can put something in here. So we got feedback from people that sometimes people didn't know how to sort of get into the story map. So if you have text here, um, then it will make a button on the home page. You can make some changes to the base map. This is a little bit um, maybe unsatisfying, but if you pick from this menu, uh, OpenStreetMaps, for example, is a Wikipedia-like service that provides maps. They're kind of cluttery. Um, you can you can get more complicated with this, but it takes uh, caring about it. If you're interested in that, feel free to submit a report request from that site that I just showed you, and we can sort of follow up on how you might make it fancier. To add uh, locations, you just click on the plus here. It will add a new slide, and then you can search for an address like Fisk Hall in Evanston. And if you find it on the marker, then you just select it. And here you go. Uh, this map has zoom controls, so you can get closer if you want. And if you don't like how the marker is placed, you can actually drag it uh, or double click to place it. So you can make some adjustments like that. And then again, uh, the rest of it is just like with every other slide. And you can add more. Here's 303 Swacker, and so on and so forth. If you want to see how things are going a little bit more like it will be when it's published, you can switch to the preview tab, and um, it sort of takes you to that step in the process. Um, notice that the options are grayed out unless you go back to edit. Also, if you want, we don't tend to get too deep into this, but for each slide, uh, as with timeline, you can set the, use the background to either make a color or upload an image or use an image that you've already uploaded. Um, and if you want, you could change this one doesn't have marker options because it's the home page. But for other slides after that, uh, you have the ability to change how the map marker looks, which is, again, sort of specialized. But if you don't care for this little pin with uh, some text in it, you can change it as you like. When you're done and ready to publish your story map, click on the Share button and it will show you the URL, and you can use this URL again to share it with someone to just get their feedback. Um, or if you want to embed it, you can get the embed code uh, from a little bit lower here. Um, 
for story map, for technical reasons, uh, for timeline, we're not able to control, you know, when you send a message by tweet or even text message, tools tend these days to uh, pull in the title and uh, maybe the lead image of that um, at that URL. Uh, you can control that with story map by setting the contents here. You use the title of your story map, but you can set an image and a little blurb by using these pieces. So that's pretty much what you need to know about story map. Um, as uh, with timeline, if you look at the home page, there is a link for help. It has some frequently asked questions and pointers to the same support system. There's examples on the pages. We just learned recently that some of these are no longer online, so we have to update it, but there's some that are pretty cool examples. So again, there you have story map in a nutshell. And for the rest of the tools, I'm not going to go into nearly as much detail about what they do, uh, but I will just show them to you so that you know what's out there. So um, Juxtapose JS is an image slider tool. This one is also pretty straightforward to embed. So if you have a circumstance where you have two related images and you want people to be able to compare them, then it's just an easy way to pop them into this little widget that has a sliding bar. This is an example of uh, satellite imagery of the Winter Olympics from 2014 from the site right before it was ready on the right where there's lots of construction on the left. There's almost nothing you can see how much was built for the Olympics. As with uh, our other tools, uh, if you had clicked on the big green button or click on make it juxtapose, you come to this. You find your images on the web. You can host them on Dropbox. And uh, there you go and click on publish. And again, the rest is similar to our other tools. And it, uh, you're all very smart and can figure it out. The next tool, which is very popular with students, is called SoundSight. This one is a little different because it doesn't make embeddable blocks. Instead, it allows you to set up to have an embedded audio player in uh, the context of the text of a web page. So if you click on it, it starts playing the audio and the progress bar animates. And uh, this allows you to share sound without people having to sort of fuss with a player and lose the context of your story and just link the sound directly to to what you're trying to say is i think this is very effective with interviews or speeches um, especially if there's characteristics of the way that the words were spoken that tell some part of the story that are hard to convey uh, just by describing it in text this is a little harder uh, to use because again it's not an embeddable block it's line by line but the medill reports crew uh, are also familiar with embedding SoundSight and can work through those issues with you. Another cool thing to know about SoundSight is that if you have a clip, if you have a sound source that you have multiple clips that you want to use, like different lines from an interview or a speech, you don't have to edit that file into different sub files or clips of that file. You can just upload the file once and then tell SoundSight the beginning and end times of when to do that. And I'm not going to get into that at all either, but again, there's a big green button and it takes you to this and then you put your URL in and it will lead you through it. And it's pretty straightforward and we'll, we're here to help. I'll go very quickly through our last two embeddable storytelling tools. If you have a story about data, you may be interested in Storyline.js, which takes the slideshow model, the timeline uh, sort of initiated and puts it with a chart of data. So again, there's a headline and text um, there's not much you can do to control the presentation of this. Uh, it's sort of simple by design, and also we haven't invested a lot more to sort of bling it out. Um, but if you have a data set, you can do this. You basically upload your data set to Google Sheets. The instructions are pretty clear about this. You don't have to change uh, your source data, but you do have to add two columns for the annotations for the rows where you want annotations. And if you want to try it out a little bit, you can click here to use our demo file and try it out for yourself. Um, or try it with your own data. It's very easy to use, like all the rest. Finally, we have a tool called Scene VR, which uh, was sort of an experiment in technology that hasn't taken off that much. But if you have a um, story that is really about a place and you want people to get the sense of the place, you can actually make these uh, these immersive images simply by using the panorama photo setting on your camera. Almost every smartphone lets you do this, and in fact. Um, we expected people to do that, and so you can. The website for making a scene is actually tuned to work with your phone, so you can just go out and shoot these panoramas, upload them, and then put them into a story that has um, captions and and notes like this. So a gallery uh, sort of thing. So that was a quick run through of Night Lab's primary storytelling tools. Hopefully, you'll find some of them interesting. Again, if you need some support, 
use our online help system. And I'm looking forward to telling you more about these sometime soon. Bye-bye.